welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to another edition of the SFL podcast presented by ATM Music here. I am your current host, the assistant director of player personnel, Ryan Karpinski. Uh, with me, as like always, we have the quarterback for the London Knights, Rob Roby. How are you doing? Ooh, what's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, surviving. It's been a crazy week again already, and we're, we're recording earlier in the week, so it's uh, it's been a crazy early week. Yeah, man. I like I like a little earlier in the week, man. You know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> go ahead, knock it out. Yeah, I mean, as long as the rest of the week goes smooth, we're all good, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And joining us today, we also have the owner of the Mexico City Aztecs, Ramos Lynn. How are you doing, Ramos? I'm doing pretty good. You know, uh, coming on fresh from last week, we had many good games. We had the SFL Blitz, more than 10,000 people watching at the same time on Twitch mm-hmm. at one point at the end. So, you know, coming up fresh, doing this earlier than uh, usual, so you know, all good. Oh yeah, it it was a it was a pretty competitive week this week as well for games. Um, but before we touch on them, um, that SFL blitz, what'd you guys think? Man, that was awesome, man. I, I felt like I don't know. I felt like my like a little baby, man. My head kept turning <laughs> and spinning, man. Touchdown, touchdown, block, touchdown, interception, oh, yeah. whoa. <laughs> it was just crazy, man. That was like, that was just an awesome experience, man. Like if you, um, I mean, I had to go back the next day and watch all the games, obviously, because I was like, whoa, you know, but um, there were some big games during man, that time period. Yeah, man. That was like the perfect day, man, for for that. And it, it was just an awesome experience, man. Just, you know, and I, I actually didn't pay much attention to the chat. Uh, and I got to take in a full experience, man. I just felt <laughs> like I was learning so much, man. It was just my head was being crammed, yo. You know, like <laughs> yeah. I, uh, it yeah. it all it started off with a little bit of comedy with uh, Cam forgetting to unmute his mic. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm actually surprised people haven't really brought that up. But then again, it is it's Cam. You don't want to get too much yeah. on his bad side. Um, don't want to get the band button. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> He's like, oh, you were gonna progress this week. Yeah, what progression? <laughs> so, but what about you, Ramos? What do you think? You know, the same. You know, we had uh, many good games, and we had a lot of action on those games. You know, the uh, Mexico City Atlanta game accumulated sixty-four points. Uh, Tallahassee and Las Vegas. I was coming in the game with Andy. That game had fifty-one points. You know, so we we saw a lot of scores, interceptions. You know, sacks. You know, very 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 exciting plays, deep throws. You know, we've been very excited in place, and, and I think this is something that we will see more and more from the SFL. You know, we've had already a few games in the front page of Twitch, so, uh, and now including the SFL Blitz. So as we progress, and now we are obviously a partner with Twitch, so as we progress, we will have more and more games, more and more exposure, uh, which is great, which is obviously great for the league. And, uh, you know, I think the broadcasting crew did a tremendous job across the board, and... You know, I think that the SFL was well represented by every one of the teams that played uh, that afternoon. So, you know, very, very happy for, for the league and for everybody. And, you know, hopefully we have another opportunity like that in the, in the near future. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I mean, a lot of the broadcasters did really well. Um, the The whole presentation was amazing. Real Big, big shout out to Cam. Um I know he was kind of stressing about how it was going to work out, but I, th- I think he did amazing. Um, he had a little bit of technical difficulties with some uh, buffering of streams early on also, but he, I think he handled that pretty well. Um, and uh, I, we had a new SFL record set this weekend, if you guys haven't heard. Um, you guys know which one I'm referring to here, right? Yeah, it was a 100-yard touchdown. Yeah, 100, 100-yard rush yeah. Uh, by the Denver Nightwings running back uh, Jared McChesney. Yeah, um, man, I saw him take that to the crib. That was, <laughs> whew, that was that was insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was, and and you know, it's one of the few records that cannot be broken. Yep. So you, you I mean you can't get any further? That record. Yeah, you you can tie it, but you know you cannot have uh, anything more than this. You know, every other record, to my knowledge, in the SFL can be broken. I don't think uh, there's another unbreakable record. If I remember correctly, I don't think we have a 109 yard return or uh, I don't believe like that. so. I think we have a I think that um Alaska had a 108 yard 
interception return once, or it was Sioux Falls. It was it was in that game. It was at, at last Sioux Falls, and I think it was the Alaska player or uh, had a hundred and eight yard interception return. Yeah. So they, they they can still be broken, but this one, you know, a hundred yards, it will never be broken. So congrats to McChesney and the Never Nightwings. That was a tremendous run, great blocking. Uh, he yeah. just needed to break one tackle and. Then he was just off to the races, and nobody was able to catch him. Yeah, he, he got a really big key block down the field. I didn't get a, I don't remember who it was. I didn't get to catch it. Um, but he got a really big key block at about like the twenty twenty five yard line. That final, they sprung him that final twenty yards basically. Um, right. And and just looking at the chat um, while they were doing that, I mean, it was exploding. I mean, it was craziness. Um, yeah. So, and I mean. It, they were playing against a pretty good high-powered offense out of the Dallas Lobos, um, and not to be really kind of putting it against them, uh, I mean, a 100-yard run is insane. Um, and including that, McChesney, I think, ran for almost 250 yards. So he he had a heck of a week for himself. Um, and so, I mean, when a running back's on his game, he's on his game. Uh, so I mean, right. it's, it's it's hard to stop to pull a man down when he's he's feeling himself and just breaking through everything. Yeah, I think uh, Richard Snowden was smiling down from above, man. It's like, <laughs> oh my, you made me proud, son. You made me proud. Yeah, and I, I believe that's the uh, the owner of Denver, Jeremy Vega's favorite, one of his favorite running backs too. So I mean, it it, uh, it, it was a, it was a perfect moment for him, I think. Right. Right. So. <laughs> All right. So yeah, besides that, um, the rest of the the games here, obviously, we had a couple good ones. Um, OKC and San Francisco came down to the wire. Really, it came down to uh, onside kick that was recovered by OKC to kind of seal the game there. Um, mm-hmm. It was for a while. It looked like OKC was just going to pull away. It looked like the game was in hand, and then out of nowhere, San Francisco just d- came roaring back. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you guys think about that one? Did you guys did you guys get to see that one at all um, during the during the games uh, and see? Did you think they were going to pull that upset? I guess not upset that comeback. You know, San Fran gets in these uh these hot spells, man. You know, so they start off a little cold sometime, and you don't know what's going on, and then they just start here, get a field goal here, get a stop here, man. You know, and uh, they 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 tend to they tend to you know kind of kind of hang around for a second, man, and then sometimes they either explode or they kind of you know fall off a little bit, man. So I, I saw um bits and pieces of that game uh, during the blitz, and I went back and checked some of the replay. And uh, they look, you know, they they they're they're hanging in there, man. It's, that's not a team you just push over, you know what I mean? Like they're, mm, yeah, they're, for uh, sure. A pretty 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 good team, man. So um, I I uh hats hats off, you know. Um, they did give up a lot of big plays, and um, you know, uh, but at the end of the day, man, I mean, they're still I've been put up thirty five points, and they're still in it, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I, the, they got they got that seems to be the ageless wonder back there over at the tight end. I mean. He seems to just make big play after big play. Um, Tiberius Bovine there. I think he's one of the only players that has been here since week one. And, I mean, not to be outdone or anything. So Tiberius Bovine, he ended up with 11 catches for 227 yards. I mean, that's yeah. unheard of for a tight end. Yeah. But not to be outdone, Rich Pratchard, eight catches, 271 yards. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that put that put Deacon yeah. Deacon Nickens up there to 561 yards on wow. 46 uh, attempts and 29 completions. I mean, he he had himself one heck of a game. Um yeah. and I mean, like I said, Tiberius Bovine, he just he finds a way. Every season he finds a way to make these big plays. He's becoming very quickly famous for these just long bombs down the middle of the field and just l- flat out f- just laying out for the ball and somehow bringing it down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, it, it's San just Frank, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. San yeah. Fran continues to play that play, play the underdog here. You know, they're like they're kind of like Rocky in a in a bout. You know what I mean? They're they're getting beat up, and you know they come back in the in the final stages, man. You know, and they're really tough, really really tough to beat, man. You know, so yeah. Uh, and that's off again. Yeah. Besides the uh, the ungodly amount of passing yards, I'm gonna pop. I'm gonna quiz you guys real quick. How many carries do you think Doyle had in this game for OKC? Z zero. <laughs> I don't know. He actually had know. one carry. One. For negative <laughs> oh, wow. three negative three yards. I don't know how that happens, honestly. <laughs> I <clears throat> I mean, we we have these regulations that have it set up to where 
you you need to be able to have a certain percentage of running running and everything, and then mm-hmm. only, still only getting one one carry in a game is just like what. And then yeah. not only like normally if you see that you'd see something like you saw Dallas last season where they attempted like seventy some passes, but he only attempted forty six passes. So it's <laughs> it's not like it wasn't like, I mean obviously it's a really really big ratio, but it's like it wasn't one of those weird games where it's like seventy eighty ninety attempted passes and only like four or five rushes. No, it was it was like in what looked like it was supposed to be. Uh, a game plan of balancedness, and then just for some reason they decided to like you know what, throwing's working. Let's keep going it. <laughs> right, right, right. Insane. Yeah, and and I was dead wrong about the game because I said I didn't say that I thought that San Fran was going to win by double digits and everything. Yeah. Uh, I was I was dead wrong, and and to answer your question, I thought they were going to come back at the end. Yeah. Uh, at one point I did, and man, it's happening, right? It's happening. They're, they're going <laughs> to get the onsides, and, and it's going to get crazy. Uh, but um, no, congrats to OKC. I mean, they show resilience in this game. I mean, at the end of the day, obviously you have to give all the credit to them. They were able to build up to that lead and then hold on to it uh, to for dear life at the end. But, yeah. but still, I mean, they, they were able to to get the W. Bovine had a magnificent game with more than 200 yards, and you know they they keep doing their thing. And you know, OKC, they I mean they they have a good offense. Know the weapons that they have. Yeah. Right, but but sometimes it's the inconsistencies by the middle and the late of the season. So hopefully they have learned from from the previous mistakes that they, they had in the in seasons past, and they just can finish as strong as they played on on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it, it it's one of it was one of those games. I mean, like you're you're watching it happen, and you're just like, <clears throat> oh my god, is this really gonna happen? And then you're like, oh my god, this is gonna happen. <laughs> and then it's like, oh my god, how did it not happen? <laughs> So, um, Definitely. yeah, and so I mean, looking in, looking in comparison <clears throat> to last week, there's one game that I'm actually extremely happy that this happened for them, um, and it's the Chicago Wildcats. Oh, they were destroyed <laughs> last week in Week Three, I, and yeah. and there's no easy way to put it. They lost three to thirty eight, and it was it was just not a pretty game. This mm-hmm. week they come back and they play a pretty solid New Orleans team so far this season. Yeah, and they put up thirty-one points and held held New Orleans to twelve. I, yeah, I, I mean, tremendous. that's that's one heck of a way to do yeah. have a bounce back game in on in all honesty. Um, yeah, most definitely. What What did you guys think about that one? Well, uh, you know, I, I will obviously echo what you just said. I think that, and this is the great thing about the SFL. You know, I've said it many times. It's like any team can beat anybody uh, at any point. So, um, because of how you know, competitive this league is. You may have a game where you get blown out by 30 points and the very following game, you blow out somebody by 30 points or, or, or in this case, 19 points. And, um, you know, I was even raving about Xander Gold being potential MVP, right? Yep. And now all of a sudden you have Chicago putting 31 points and allowing and, and just shutting down that great offense. I mean, First week, he had like a 90% completion percentage. And, and yep. for the season, he had like an 80-something completion percentage to shut them down to 12 points and getting the W big time. Uh, you know, kudos to them. Yep. Uh, and, and great job. Great job by Shan Barner, the, the coach, just fixing the mistakes quickly. You know, because sometimes it takes coaches three, four, five weeks to fix the playbook. And it seems that in just one week, yep. you know, he got some stuff together. He will continue to polish the playbook and – you know, they're back on track. So congratulations for them. And, you know, it's, 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 you know, to put Chicago still in a high pedestal, you know, yeah, uh, they, they beat us, you know, we are, we are three and one in Mexico city. We are three and one and we lost to Chicago. Yep. So it was shocking that they lost to Vancouver. Uh, not because Vancouver is not a good team. It's just, you know, the way they lost 38 to three. Yeah. And now they're able to bounce back. So it's, it's great for the Wildcats. Yeah. And, and real quick also, I mean, in comparison to the other game where we had 46 passes, E.T. King he actually completed 75% of his passes in this one, uh, 20, 18 of 24 for two touchdowns and no interceptions. Um, I think the, I think the bigger bright spot for me in this game was uh, Jared Willis. He, he rushed 20 times for 162 yards and put up two touchdowns. Um, 
granted, half of those yards did come on one play with an 84-yard run. Um, but, I mean, still 162 yards. <laughs> so, let's see. I mean, that's just – that's a great day for any running back, honestly. And so, him being yeah. able to help them out there um, and then E.T. King being able to hold on to the ball, I mean – it was a pretty well-rounded, well-rounded game. You had Shane Varner putting up uh, 71 yards receiving, uh, J.C. Torres 124 yards receiving, uh, Buchanan Simmons another 50 yards receiving. So I mean, it was it was a pretty well-rounded game um, for pretty for pretty much most of the offense and the defense. There was one big standout to me, and that would be, have to be A.J. Barnes, their strong safety. He put up a total of 17 tackles, um, 14 of them solo. Uh, what were the uh, stats on Deezer Powell, man, for that game? Uh, Deezer Powell looks like he was gotten uh, eight catches for 94 yards. Uh, and yeah. then Matt Wolf was eight catches for 141 yards. Um, okay. And, yeah, the Chicago defense held New Orleans offense to, to just four field goals, too. So there was, there was actually no touchdowns Whoa. for them. Wow. So yeah, they they basically you know Chicago did to New Orleans what New Orleans did to Houston. Yep. In week one, just limited to four field goals, and you know it's when when you can limit that offense or any offense to just field goals, uh, you're gonna win most games. You know instead of you know taking 28 points against it's just 12 points. You know that that makes things way easier. So you know kudos to that defense. You know sometimes they they show that they were bending, but they never broke. Yeah, and um, and it's it's a it's a big quality win for the Wildcats. Yeah, yeah for shout sure. Shout out to Shan, man. He, he 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 called our studios. He was blowing up our phones. Guys, <laughs> guys, look, man, you got to get the Wildcats <laughs> some love, man. So, <laughs> so yeah, shout out to him, man. Yeah, here's man, here's man. your love, Shan, man. We 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 don't we don't miss these things. We just sometimes we just yeah, forget to bring yeah. them up. Is all. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> so. Um, and I mean, we had a couple, a couple other teams kind of, uh, a couple of teams get their first wins of the season. Uh, we got it. Houston was over there at home down in Houston oh, at the man. hyena den park. And, yeah, uh, boy. you had Vancouver was... who last week we were just talking about them. They beat Chicago 38 to three. Uh, this mm-hmm. week was an extremely hard fought game and it came down to the last possession um, this is yeah. a game that I was able to watch the majority of, and it was it was a crazy back and forth slugfest, basically. Yeah. Um, and part of the part of the 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 downfall of Vancouver this week was uh, Warren Murray in the first quarter, like the first three or four <laughs> minutes of the game, had almost like two hundred yards yeah. already rushing. Oh, I saw that man. It, that was I, ridiculous. I I seriously I so the the record for rushing yards in the game. I don't know the total number. Um, but is actually held by a Houston running back already, and Darnell Black, who is actually they're now mm-hmm. currently their backup running back to Warren Murray. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly thought watching that first part of that game that we were about to watch a new record just be demolished. <laughs> Two hundred yards in, in literally the first few minutes. I I thought he was he was on his way to a thousand yard game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like forget a thousand yard season. I thought he's in a thousand yard game right there. Um, but credit to the Vancouver <laughs> yeah. defense. They really stood up and they actually held them to probably about 60 yards. I believe it was through the rest of the game. Um, I mean, he did have an injury where he missed some time with, but he came back in the game and, but they, the Vancouver defense really came back and just, they really roared back and held him in check. Um, for the most part, the damage was done though. Uh, and so the final score there ended up being, uh, Vancouver 26 and Houston 37, um, Who got that pick at the end of the game? Man? I, I that was to say awesome, the, there was a pick six at the very end of the game there, <laughs> and that was uh, Everett Garrison, uh, uh, my actually my replacement basically over there in Houston um, when I was a player down there as Ryan Michaels, um, mm-hmm. and we kind of <laughs> joke back and forth like I give you I give you my blessing to take my place here just just don't let me down <laughs> here, and I, I got to say it, it was it brought back memories watching him t- just pull that ball out of the air and just run straight into the end zone. Um, yeah, that's just a great but, way to end the game. Yeah, I mean, it was inspired. it was a great way. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I have to say, honest, honest to God, I, I think he might be the best corner right now, at least this season. Whoa, I, I think hold on, Ramos, Ramos, <laughs> at least, Ramos, at least Ramos. this season. I'm not saying I'm not saying overall. At least this season, if you look at how he's playing so far, yes, I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna 
I'm not gonna take Cash McFly away from you, but uh, <laughs> what I say this season right now his level of play. I mean, he's gonna run away with defensive rookie of the year. Like he's nice. like he got like two or three interceptions. I, I think it was two interceptions against us. Now he gets a pick six. He's playing so good, and and the reason why this is so impressive is because as a rookie he's not covering number one receivers. He's in that Ryan Michael spot right now, mm-hmm. and, and he is just a ball hog, and he's so good, uh, has a lot of range, um, and uh, I was very impressed about this game overall. I think I think that if we had fantasy football, I think that Vancouver's defense was kind of the lock of the week to take for fantasy football because they just shut down Chicago to three points, and Houston was unable to score an offensive touchdown all season. Yeah. So... Nice. If you look at the stats, right? If you look at if you look at the stats, if you look at the numbers, it's like, man, I don't think that Houston is going to score more than seven points this game. But they were able to score thirty-seven. Yeah. Uh, which is which is so good to to see them play at their level. That this is what Houston is. You know, this is Houston is not a team that kicks field goals. Houston has been historically a team that puts thirty points on the board you know, runs the ball all over the place, right? They, the, the running back essentially still has the, the the record for a single game back in the day, Darnell Black, right? Uh, yep. 424 yards in one there game rushing. So, you know, this is a team that runs the ball, runs the ball, run. And I, at one point I just said, I, I, I thought that maybe he was going to break the record um, of 424 yards. And um, I mean, it, 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 I think it was just a great game for them and, and just – a confidence booster for their offense as a whole, you know, for Kentes Johnson and those guys. So I'm very happy for them. Yeah. And, and real quick, not to take Kazmik fly away from you, like Ramos was saying, I mean, we know, we, we know you mm-hmm. like him. We know he's a great player in his own right there, but yeah, Kaz over everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I say, here's, I'm like, here's just a little quick breakdown of Everett. Uh, he's actually through, through the three games that are recorded at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. He's second in tackles for cornerbacks with seven <laughs> tackles a game. Uh, he actually has the four interceptions through three games. Um, we know that he got at least two interceptions this last game. So through the first four games of the season, he has uh, six interceptions. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna try to pick your brain here a second. The last mm. player to have this many interceptions this early in the season won the defensive player of the year, I believe it was, or the defensive rookie of the year. I think they were. They were in the voting for defensive player, but I believe that went to Alex Dominguez. I mean, and we know what kind of beast he was. But mm-hmm. this was a, the defensive rookie of the year, and this was back in season 10. Do you guys remember who that was? Defensive rookie of season 10. 10. Um, uh, oh, I was here season 10. Let's yeah, see. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you uh, Tulsa. Uh, it was um, Ball. Yep, Charles Ball. He had, yeah, I, I believe it was wow. seven interceptions through the first like, right. five games. Wow. You're right. I remember. Yep. And, and he had also like two kick returns or something. Yep. And he was doing kick returns and he had actually a couple of kick return touchdowns and he ended up winning defensive rookie of the year. Now I'm not, I'm not saying he's going to win it now just based on yeah, what yeah. he's done through first four weeks. But if he keeps up this pace, I, I think hands down, this is defensive rookie of the year. What's um, his name again? Everett Garrison. Uh, for, for the Houston Hyenas. Okay. And okay. hands down, in my opinion, it's defensive rookie of the year at the moment. If he continues the level of play he's got now, and if he does, and if he does continue this level of play, I I feel that he actually could be a, a front runner for defensive player of the year. And that's how well I think he's doing right now, and that's with these guys getting all these massive sack total games. And everything. I mean, we have we still we have Ghibli Do over there in Tulsa, who's gotten ten sacks through four games. He's mm-hmm. he's pushing Alex Dominguez numbers there. Right. Um, yeah, I think that maybe because of the impressive and the like staggering stats, you know, maybe one of those guys like Ghibli, maybe like um, Alex Dominguez, will get it one more time. Um, but you know, if he continues at this pace, you know, and if he gets fifteen interceptions this year, it's it's going to um, be hard to go against him. Yeah, it, it's hard. I mean, especially if Houston comes back and makes the playoffs, for example, you can say, hey, you know, he is a big reason why. Yeah, he was you definitely know, the like a was cornerstone. Struggling at the beginning, yeah. The, the, the offense was struggling at the beginning and, and now starting to pick up, but he is the reason as well why the defense 
was so good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it could happen. And I, I don't mean to tell, I don't want to sound like a homer cause I played for them, but I mean, it's just, he stands out to me right now. He stands out as the top cornerback and just, and this just crazy. Like he's, he's having a great beginning of this season and that's not to take anything away from these other guys. I mean, Camden Hoffman, Hoffman, <clears throat> he's got four picks through four games. Uh, we had Pat Ketza, who's got who's up there with four with two interceptions. We've gotten uh, Dante West over in there, Vancouver with three interceptions. But these guys all have their stats up there um, through four games, basically. And Everett Garrison has has at least two more than that on both of them. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's 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 far and away, it's in my opinion, the top defensive back. I would say top for cornerback or or safeties. Um, and it's just, and in my opinion, he's he is the front runner for both rookie defensive rookie of the year and defensive player of the year. Um, I mean, obviously everything's open for debate on that, but it's just right now in my mind, he is the guy to watch. Okay, Garrison G Zone. <laughs> <laughs> So and I know his his Discord name is We Go Legend. So I mean he's apparently he's going legend. I mean let's not let's not pull punches there. <laughs> we we got loading legends hashtag loading legends and he's he's taking that to heart. Nice. So, nice. Um, and then to get on to another team here that I believe pulled their first win of the season, uh, I believe they were zero and two. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now they're one and two. The Tallahassee Pride were able oh, to uh, to. Pull the upset, if you will. Now, granted, we know Tallahassee's history, having been the <coughs> runner-up in the last two championship games, but starting off 0-2 was kind of a new thing for them. Um, but they were pulled pull the quote-unquote upset against the Las Vegas Fury. Um, and this is another game that I got to see, at least the early going of, and A.J. Francis in that early part of the game, uh, I think he had like three touchdowns in the first quarter, maybe the first half at least. And in the first half. The first half, okay. I can't remember if it was first quarter or not, but yeah. So I mean, he he had himself not a great, not a, like a massive yardage game at the beginning of the game. He did end up with 130 yards rushing, I believe it was. Let me see, 119 yards rushing, as it looks like, um, and that was on 30 carries. So it was, it was it was a mediocre day, yards per carry, four yards per carry in the SFL is kind of like an, an average day, but those three touchdowns definitely. I mean. <laughs> If we had SFL fantasy football, like I know it's, it's actually been brought up by quite a few people this week watching these games. He's the man you wanted on your team um, besides maybe Warren Moore, Warren Murray or uh, Grace, Grayson, Will- Jared Willis, I think it was. Not Grayson. Grayson's the receiver for Tallahassee. I saw the name here and I was like, Wait, that's not right. <laughs> so, but I mean, those, those guys, the guys that are the touchdown machines, those are the guys you want. And this is the week you wanted A.J. Francis. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to see that game, man, but um, I was happy that they finally got a got a W in the column, man. You know, it's not used to seeing the blemish, mm-hmm. you know, the losing record, <laughs> you know, on them. So, yeah, yeah. and and the de- the defensive line for uh, for Tallahassee reared reared its ugly head, as we we could say um, this yeah. week, and and they were they pulled down uh, Thomas Raman Senior over there uh, for nine sacks this week. So and they they well, have been a pretty staple of the de- defensive lines of basically the entire league uh, since season ten when they first did the little experiment of having four star defensive linemen and it, nine sacks. I mean, there's it's, it's hard to argue against it, honestly. Yeah, it looks like um, a couple of these guys are leading the leaderboards as well, man. Um, who is this? Uh, uh, oh yeah, well obviously EJ DeQ, mm-hmm. and then you got. Um, Hunter Norwood, right? Oh, then uh, Taekwon, yeah, Taekwon Hill, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, guys are pretty good. <laughs> go go ahead, Ramos. Yeah, and I was coming in this game with Andy, and just a matter of and the game came down to the trenches. Uh, the defensive line of Tallahassee, as we we're as you were saying, you know, they overpower the Las Vegas offensive line. It was. It, it was really impressive to watch how the defensive line was winning pretty much every single battle. Not only were they getting to the quarterback, Thomas Ramon, but they didn't let Robert Redford do absolutely anything on the ground. And on the other side, the offensive line of the Tallahassee Pride really played very well against the defensive line of the Vegas Fury, which is pretty good. I mean, they have Pat Johnson over there. 
and, and, and those guys. And they were just opening lanes, huge lanes for Francis. And, and, and Pat Johnson, at some points, he was just getting pushed around and moved around from uh, by the center. I was like at the, at the center. He was just moving him around. Um, and it was basically a game where him, the center, if, if, the, if the run was to the right, for example, you know, he just turned his back, the center just turned his back, put Matt, uh, Pat, Pat Johnson on the left, and there was a huge opening for yeah. A.J. Francis to run on every single location, it seemed. And, uh, I mean, they, they, they really, Tallahassee played extremely well at every facet of the game. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, this is Tallahassee that we were expecting to see. Not a, you know, not an 0-2. Uh, but this is the town of Tallahassee that we expected to see from the beginning of the season. Yeah, th- this mm-hmm. looked like a Tallahassee team that was reminiscent of those last two seasons, and it looks like they might have found their stride in this game um, because I believe Las Vegas was undefeated at 3-0 and coming into this week as well. Yep, yeah, exactly. And, and Vegas is a good team, of course. I mean, this is Yeah, not they're a very saying, great team. They, Yeah, this is not saying Vegas is not a good team or they are you know, 3-0 or 2 you know, It's a fluke. No, I mean, they're still a very – or 2-0. It's It's – they're a very good team, and um, it's just, you know, what happens when you go against a better team who has learned from their mistakes, and they're just coming back in a desperate type of situation where they don't want to go 0-3, and they just put everything on the table, and they just have a great game. So it is just, you know, wrong time, uh, wrong place for, for Vegas, and yep. I, I, they, they will bounce back. I mean, they, they have a lot of talent, that team. Yeah, they have, they have a lot of talent on that team. Um, I mean, we... We talked about it. They have probably one of the best special teams units in the in the SFL. Um, yes, and they definitely have one of the best secondaries with Mary Gatea, Mike, ja- and Max Jackson back there. Um, they yeah. they've been a constant force since they joined the league. Um, so I mean, definitely don't count Las Vegas out after this game. It, it wasn't a fluke that they were three and they were three and zero coming into this this last week here. Um, so they're another team to kind of keep an eye on. So we we kind of covered. Um, this last week's games we're going to shift gears here we're going to move up to uh well actually here before before i move it on next week we'll stay on week four since we are recording a little early this week um the players of the week article has not dropped yet um why don't you guys go ahead and give me your players of the week this week who who stood out who stood out for you guys offense defense doesn't matter just give me one player murray Murray. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Murray. Yeah. I was gonna say Murray as well, but yeah. I'm gonna. I was gonna say Murray as well, but uh, due to the fact that I thought Sanford was gonna really play very well and, and OKC just completely slapped in my face, uh, I'm gonna say Dick and Nickens. Uh, mm-hmm. He took ownership right. of the entire game and he just dominated and and took his team to the victory. You know, they, they just ran the ball once, so the game was completely on his hands, on Dick and Nickens' hands, and he just got it done. So I'm I'm gonna go with him. All right, I can I can respect both those choices. I mean, we both we kind of slightly covered both of them already, both of them in it, and so I I can definitely respect those choices for sure. So, mm-hmm. all right, so now let's go ahead and shift gears here. We're gonna look a little peer into the future a little <laughs> bit here. So we have some some what looks like on paper some pretty good games here. I'm gonna let you guys kind of take it take it here. Um, I'll go ahead with you, Rob, first. Looking at the schedule. Um, what game stands out to you? Um, for week four? For week five. Week five. Uh, week mm-hmm. five, we're looking at, oh, man, it's going to be a battle. There's a lot of battles right here. Well, first mm-hmm. of all, Vancouver and New Orleans. Um, yep. You know, still tra- I'm still tracking uh, Vancouver. Shout out to Mickey Martino and those guys out there. Man. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm looking for New Orleans to bounce back, but Vancouver to – you know, keep going. Yeah, going uh, going into uh, week four, they actually had the number one defense over there in Vancouver. Um, yeah. Over overall, they had one of the I think either the first or second points per game allowed. Uh, they I think they had like the first or second fewest yards per game allowed. Like the defense had been stifling, um, and yeah. then Houston just found their stride against them. So I mean, yeah. we we could see them return to form here and and just yes. shut down New Orleans kind of like they New Orleans was able to get was shut down this last week here. Now granted yeah. also we're looking for Hugh, for New Orleans to be bouncing back here so it it could be quite the scrappy battle basically. It could be either high scoring or it could be pretty low scoring. This is um actually looks like one of the 
most competitive weeks I've seen <laughs> um, for as far as schedules because you got obviously Vancouver and New Orleans and you got Baltimore and Tallahassee. And then you got the Sharks going out to Dallas. And then you got um, Indy and OKC. And um, I'm not sure. I think Mexico City is probably going to end up uh, getting the win over Carolina. But then you got Denver and STL. You got Alaska and the Fury. You got Chicago and the Hyenas. And then you got Atlanta trying to do something against QCC, man. So to restore their season. Uh, so this this looks like a really, really competitive <laughs> Uh, week of games right here, man. Um, to say the least. Yeah. All right. So here, let me let me modify the question, I suppose. Yeah. So, what what team do you think that this week could be a make or break game for them, even this early in the season? Make or break? Um. I mean, what what game do you think if if they win here, it'll it it'll have a huge impact on the rest of their season. If they lose here they might want to start looking oh. towards the next year. Oh, uh, oh man, that's, that's a tough if, question. Yeah, that's a tough question. It, it, it if, is. If you put it that <laughs> way, I think it's, it's, I think, I think it's a little bit where you can say, Hey, if you lose here, you're kind of done. But I think that there's, there's one team that is really looking forward for this game, trying to keep the momentum. And that's the Tallahassee pride. They have to go mm-hmm. on the road against Baltimore and it's mm-hmm. not easy to run the ball against Baltimore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, AJ Francis had a very good game, but, um, and, and all due respect to the Vegas linebackers and, and the front seven, they're, they're fantastic on their own right. But a man takes, he's a different beast, man. I, 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 <laughs> I think that, yeah, yeah, I think that, you, you know, he's one of those linebackers, one of the few linebackers where it's like, okay, you got him. It's just a personal battle between the linebacker and the running back. Yeah. And Tallahassee right now, you know, in the past ball all over the yard. And now more and more, they're becoming more of a more balanced team yep. and even a run first team. So if Tallahassee can get the run game going early and often, if they win this game, it's, you know, they were looking at an 0-2, potentially, if, you know, going against an undefeated Vegas team and then a very good Baltimore team in Baltimore. Yep. You know, you could have thought maybe this team was going to go 0-4. And now they're one and two, and if they win this game two and two, uh, that's really going to be good for their playoff hopes, especially because Baltimore, I think, is going to be in the playoffs and for tiebreaker stuff, you know. So I, I think that Tallahassee is looking and really, really, really marking this game as very, very important. I think that's the, that's the team to watch to see if they can win it and if they can move forward. And obviously also because this is a prime time game. Yep. It's going to be played on February the 2nd on Saturday. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and I guess I should clarify, not so much a make or break game. Like, I guess a statement win, like you just kind of brought up there, there Ramos. Something that they can build off of, basically. Let's not, let's not go with make well, or break, because the season, week five, you, can't, you don't really lose the season week five. But what team would you say would have, is trying to look to make that statement win? I would say uh, STO, man. I mean, one and three, they got to face Denver. I mean, <clears throat> hey, it might be awesome to knock off Denver at home. Yeah, you know first, I, mean? I mean, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, um, we'll see how see how that goes. I mean, we saw STO, and week one, man, they were looking like, they were looking ridiculous, you know. Um, but um, we haven't really seen, um, you know, too much. They've lost, you know, they dropped three in a row. So, uh, you know, we got to see what, what they'll do uh, against Denver here, you know, at, at Denver at home, actually. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they they got to uh, travel yeah. travel there too. So that's that's going to make it a little bit harder also. I mean, yeah, it, it's yeah. hard enough to be facing an undefeated team basically. Um but mm-hmm. to face them at home. And I mean, mm-hmm. to give to give credit to St. Louis, there's only <clears throat> been one game that has actually been lost by more than 9 points, let's put it let's say. So mm-hmm. week 1 they ended up, they did beat Dallas 39 35 to 29. Uh, and then they mm-hmm. lost to OKC 37-28. So I mean that was a it was close to a one possession game there. They mm-hmm. lost to your London Knights there uh 33 to 17 and then last week they just they lost 20 to 17 against Tulsa. Yeah. So I mean it's not like they haven't been competitive. It's just one or two mm-hmm. things haven't gone their way basically um yeah. to be able to give them that little bit of edge. And I I do have to give a little shout out to Ethan Kai there because he he's taken over as offensive and defensive coordinator over there in St. Louis. 
and yeah, they've definitely and he's been, he's working hard. He's grinding the midnight oil, midnight oil. I actually know uh, Ethan Kai outside of the SFL, and I know how hard and how of a worker and how dedicated he is to this league. Um, yeah. I mean, and I think it shows. I mean, he's made this St. Louis team. Now, granted, they they are one and three, but that that's no fault of his. Like I said, there's could be one or two things that could go either way, and that ends up kind of swinging the game out of your favor or in your favor. Um, and he I got mean, a little swag on him too, man. Yeah, exactly. He's he's got this team really <laughs> yeah. looking like a different team than the St. Louis yeah. Gladiators of the past. Yes, mm-hmm. they're one and three, but they have been competitive literally every week up right. until the final the final whistle, basically. So I mean, it. If I were to say out of this week there could be an upset, I believe it actually could be that St. Louis Gladiators going against Denver. Um, that would really shock the SFL, basically. Like Denver has mm-hmm. been looking like a pretty good powerhouse here, and they, they've, they've been playing some good football. Um, but like I said, St. Louis has been scrapping with everybody, and they have been competitive with every team they've played. So this is definitely not a team you want to take lightly, and I'm hoping that Denver's not. I mean, I'm if I know Jeremy, he's not – um, Jeremy Vega, but I'm just I'm hoping that this is that it's not going to be his downfall of possibly thinking it's a one and three team. Mm-hmm. So uh, another game that I'm actually curious to check out too, though, is uh, the San Francisco Sharks versus the Dallas Lobos. Okay, um, we've actually had last week. Ogun Zulu didn't have the greatest week of uh, for games. Um, I don't know specific numbers. Um, I know he, I believe he had about like 50 or 60 yards rushing. Um, but then like the week before that, he went off. He had a great game. Uh, and so it was just it, – it's one of those things where it seems like he's hit or miss right now. Um, and that was against the Denver Nightwings back in week three uh, where they lost 44 to 37. Um, and he was able to keep his team most for the most part in that game uh, – he had 77 yards, but he had basically one long run that actually, I, I say went off, but he had he, he did what he needed to do to keep his team in the game. Mm-hmm. And that's what you want from any of your players, basically. He had one long run that really kind of put them back in, back in place there. Um, and so it's something that I'm curious to watch here because the, the Dallas defense, uh, they gave up pretty big week last week here. Uh, to McChesney, like I said, he ha- he had a a hundred yard run, but besides that, he had two hundred and like forty two yards rushing total. So it's it's not like just the one run was the killer there. It was it was a co- combination of things there um, between basically on the run game, and that's something you're going to have to be able to shore up, especially against a team uh, that has such a powerhouse runner that or a possible powerhouse runner in Ogun Zulu because we've seen him break tackles and show yeah. some shiftiness back there. Yeah, he's definitely a workhorse and uh, San Fran needs to find a way to, you know, get him going, man. Um, you know, it's not, you don't want to be one dimensional with the passing game. Yep. Uh, I know they have a very good passing game, but um uh you know his uh his build is really pretty decent, you know, for for a running back. They just yep. gotta find a way to scheme him in and um, you know, get him going on the ground. Uh I think if, if they can Get that double whammy of the pass and run game going, man. That that might be a very very difficult team to stop. Yeah, definitely for sure. So, and I I yeah. think St. Louis or not St. Louis, sorry, San Fran San Francisco is it's they're in kind of a, in a unique situation in my opinion. They are they are definitely set up for more of a passing team, and you know a lot of teams will run to set up the passing game. I feel that this yeah. team with Gabriel Manning and Matt Burnham and uh, Ermac Jackson. They have that ability to go over the top and get the passing game open early, and which actually, yeah. in reverse, could set up the passing, could set up the running game because now you have all these guys dropping back in a coverage. You have less people coming up into the box to stop the run. I mean, mm-hmm. it could be they get a, they get a lot of passing yards early and then just unleash the beast and un- Ogun Zulu, um, and we could see him have a massive game if they're able to get their passing game going on early. Yeah. So uh, what about – is there any other game that you guys kind of are really excited, I guess, to see? Um, I think there's one more for me, and that would be Las Vegas and Alaska. Um, Alaska at 2-1, two, at two and one, and uh, Las Vegas at 3-1. and one. Uh, Alaska being the, the last two championships, basically, the back-to-back champions. 
Um, starting off the season with a loss, but then winning two straight. Um, I think this game could be a really in- interesting one as well. Um, what about the rest for you guys? Yeah, me too. I think that it's very good because last season uh, you could say that the closest team that got to you know for, for being Alaska was Vegas. Actually, those Vegas was winning one of those games at halftime. Yep. And you know at the end, Alaska had you know they, they did the comeback and they won twenty six to twenty three. So it was just a three point game and. You know, um, yeah, it was I, very competitive. So yeah, I, I feel like that was the closest that they, that they had in the regular season um, of a loss. Yeah. Um, I do know in the playoffs when I mean, obviously I was part of the game, so I should know this. But Houston pushed them down to literally the final play of the game in the playoffs, um, and Alaska was able to to, right. to tip the pass away. So I mean, they're definitely beatable. Which obviously we saw the fr- in, in week one. Um, yes. When when they lost to the Baltimore, which we kind of covered them earlier, um, so they're definitely beatable. It's just it's not easy. So you definitely gonna bring your A game, especially when you travel up there to Alaska. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And, and again, if you if break, um, if they can get a lucky break, like for example, uh, a big special teams play, you know, Max Jackson returning a kick for a touchdown, or. Or a, a good punt. <laughs> Mary you know, Gartera that, 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 blocking that can, some punts. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or, or, or a good punt by McRack, who can probably, you know, pin the Alaska storm back in their own, you know, half yard line. They get a safety, for example, out of yeah. it. You know, stuff like that, you know, that could happen because they have the talent to do so and they can really switch the game. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So is there anything else here? Um, we're kind of reaching the little bit of end here. Anything else you guys kind of want to bring up, basically? Uh, any shout-outs, anything like that? Um, No, man, just uh, oh, the Hyenas in the Chicago game, man. I'm yeah, not sure if we mentioned yeah. that yet. Not yet, not yet. Go I mean, ahead. That's a, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big game. Uh, Houston looking to continue the, the little streak here after, after the momentum, you know? And uh, Chicago looking to keep, keep the momentum going. So, you know, all, all good things must come to an end. You know, yeah, so, yeah, for uh, sure. We we'll have to see. We'll have to see a super shan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can uh, <laughs> can uh, hold off this hyena attack right now, man. But um, it looks to, again, it looks like a pretty good, good uh, week of games, man. Really excited about you know tuning into. So are we gonna have an SOL blitz? <laughs> uh, I actually haven't heard just yet. Um, that'll be something that yeah. that uh, Cameron Irvine, the commissioner, he'll probably have to announce here soon if we're going to be doing that. Um, I yeah. feel it might be reserved for the front page games, but then again, I could be totally wrong. Um, okay. I know it was a really big hit. Um, and I guess actually I do have something to shout out here. Um, if you okay. have not heard, which I don't know how you haven't, uh, we were actually f- featured in a Game Informer article um, this week here um, oh, on Tuesday, I believe it was. And they they were talking about the game, what we use and how we use it basically in the league itself. Um, and they kind of shouted out our YouTube to check it out. We had about 30 or 40 people join the dis join the league, join the discord over that time period of just, just the, the games on, on a Monday night, Monday night, Monday, sorry, it was Monday article. Yeah. So nice. it, it was, it was a really big thing for the league. I mean, it's, it was huge. Um, Definitely, Game Informer is a very top market for video gaming kind of things. Uh, articles. Oh, yeah, they've been around for years, man. Yeah, they've been around for quite yeah. a while. Um, so yeah. if you if you haven't seen that, uh, make sure you check out the SFL Alerts channel. It should be inside there. Um, I believe Andy Hamilton posted it. Um, I read the article. It was actually really well done. Um, they highlighted Matt Wilson, who was a definitely a highlight of the SFL Blitz and his story through the through the SFL and what it's done, what it's meant to him as a person. Um, yeah, and man, you know, um, yeah, go uh, ahead. Not to interrupt you, man. No, but, go ahead. Uh, you know, I saw uh, the the story, Matt Wilson's story on. Every time I see his story, man, on on any platform, man, it just uh, it, it almost brings a tear to your it, eye. You it, know does, I mean? but, it does. It does. And, and yeah. it makes me extremely proud to be part of this kind of organization. Yeah. Um, basically, I was, it, um, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was checking. <laughs> I was checking out the comments and everything, man. And uh, you could just feel the inspiration, man, from people, man, you know, yep. and um, uh, just, you know, looking at people just, you know, like, wow, they were just saying, wow, man, he's a tough guy. And some guys are calling him the goat. I think I called him the goat and everything, you know, but um, well, he is, he is a yeah, Hall man. of Famer. 
Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, every time I see that, man, I, I just definitely think that's a definite angle uh, that, that, the, that the league should definitely continue to let people know, man, because there's so many people out here who are, you know, wanting to wanting to do this in, in, in life and can't, you know? Yep. Uh, and it just, um, you know, just, right. just awesome, man, seeing that, man. Yeah, you and, know, and that's... Quality. Yeah, and that's kind yeah. of what I was going to be saying was basically is like it makes me really proud to be a part of this league and seeing what we yeah, do for yeah. people's lives, basically. Um, yeah. I mean, there are people like Matt, Matt Wilson. There are people like uh, Colin Douglas, one of the co-owners for yeah. St. Louis. Um, mm-hmm. They Basically, they can't go out there and do this on their normal lives. They have something in their life that is not allowing them to be able to enjoy this kind of thing in their normal life. And this mm-hmm. basically gives them a way to do that they they get their chance to hear their name called every day every, on game day um they get the chance to to build that camaraderie with their teammates um and i know both of them made it to the sfl convention last year and uh, regrettably i couldn't go and seeing all the people and how much fun they're having and all just all the friendships being built it made me very jealous that i wasn't able to get there and um yeah. It's just it makes me extremely proud to be part of this league just to know that we're having this big of an impact on people's lives um right. and and such a positive light basically yeah, yeah you I know mean... just quick shout out to to matt wilson he's my co-owner <laughs> of the assets that's right and, he uh, is co-owner i forgot about that not just your quarterback yeah <laughs> yeah he's he's the corner co-owner of our team hall of famer uh top five in passing yards he's yep. a legend in in this in this league who's going through a little bit of a health uh, concerns mm-hmm. right now, nothing like tre- uh, threatening or, or anything like that, but yeah, he's going through some uh, health situation. So shout out to him and hopefully he gets well very soon. Um, and also shout out to everybody new uh, oh, coming yeah. into the SFL. We had not only uh, the, the people from Game Informer, but also the people who watch the Twitch. Uh, yeah, the SFL Blitz, in. yeah. Yeah, so everybody new and who's probably listening to the podcast for the first time uh, shout out to you and um stay tuned uh, this is this is a fantastic league as, as rob and and ryan were saying it's just you know it makes you proud of being to be part of this of this league and you know having having so much we, we all have so much fun i mean it's 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 really fun i mean i've been in, in a different type of communities not only in gaming but also with music but also with different stuff and there's no better community than the SFL. So uh, shout out to you and hope you enjoy it here. Yeah. Especially you new guys. I mean, it's, you guys are what the lifeblood of this league. Um, the more people we get in here, the better and the, the bigger the league grows, the more camaraderie and everything. Um, so, I mean, you guys come in here and just even the people that don't, that join the discord or join the league, even as just a fan. I mean, there's been people that have come in here and joined just as fans and were like, hey, I just want to chill, talk to you guys, play and just watch some games with you guys. <laughs> and really just having you guys come in there, and even though you don't want to be specifically part of the actual league as a player or coach or scout or anything, but knowing that we have those people out there that just enjoy the product as much as they do, that they they just want to be part of it like that, is it, it, it really yeah, it really feels good. Yeah, yeah as, as a fan, you know, there's a guy on YouTube. Shout out to you if you're watching this because you watch the YouTube transmission, not the Twitch, but I've seen <laughs> a YouTube. Leandre Noel, he is all. Oh, I think we're losing you there, Ramos. Twitch? There. Oh, can, can you hear me right now? Yeah, try that. Get, start that over. Give give this oh, man yeah. a proper shout out. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Leandre Noel. He doesn't watch the Twitch transmissions because he's not on the discord so he doesn't get notifications or anything i guess mm-hmm. i don't think he's a, he's a twitch um i don't have, i don't think he has a twitch account but anyway he's on every single youtube yes game I, I do recognize supporting the supporting it yes and, and, and he's so if you're if you're watching this shout out to you uh again he's what he's a perfect example of being a fan in the sfl not needing to be a private player or have any type of relation with any team you know, he's not with the stat team or broadcaster. He just watches the league and has done so for many seasons. Yep. So, so shout out de- to him definitely well. shout out to you and and kind of going back to your to your first shout out there to Matt Wilson. We we definitely hope you get better, Matt. And you're you're definitely a really big part of this league, and we really want you to be getting better there, man. And we we hope to have you back here more often here soon. Yes, sir. Most definitely. 
All right. And with that, I believe, unless anybody else got something else here, we uh, we are pretty much wrapping up here. I think we got it all covered. Um, any any complaints, you guys are feel, feel free to uh, throw them into my DMs. I'll most likely ignore you. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, you go, I mean, any comments, concerns, any of that stuff, um, questions about the league, any uh, people wanting to be part of the part of the podcast. Um, I'm working on getting through a list here um, and getting around to getting people onto the podcast here. Um, and just just know that I am working on it um, with the new position of di- uh, assistant director of player personnel. It's a little busy a lot of the week. Um, I'm not ignoring you, I promise. <laughs> so just just know that I am trying to work it out here, um, and hopefully I'll be able to get to you guys all soon. But with that, I'm going to bid you all adieu. Have a great rest of your guys' this week, and enjoy some F- SFL action this week. Ramos, Rob, it's been a pleasure, gentlemen. Same, man. Same. Likewise. Thank you. Yeah, not a problem. You guys have a good rest of your week as well, and good luck this weekend in your games. Absolutely. You too.